In this video, we discuss simulated annealing, which is another method to obtain minimum energy structures, which differs substantially from all the other methods discussed thus far. Okay, so simulated annealing, its no most notable feature is that it is a method for generating multiple minimum energy structures. Let's take a look at this potential energy surface on the right here. So we have a one-dimensional surface, V of X, potential energy, and X is our position coordinate. Now, this surface is quite mountainous and quite jagged, but by the standards of functions, it's actually fairly well behaved overall. But the issue here is that there are seven different minimum energy locations, seven points where the first derivative is zero and the second derivative is positive. So how on earth do we have any hope of finding all of these uh, given the traditional uh, energy minimization algorithms we have discussed thus far? because a lot of those depend on what our initial guess geometry is, and then they roll downhill from there. So that's noteworthy in all of these cases. Uh, steepest descent, conjugate gradient, as we said, newton raphson rational function optimization. All of these cases, as I said, have that similar kind of problem, is that they do local minima only, So in a specific region, they will only find the minimum which rolls downhill closest to them. There, if you start it here, you have a 0% chance of getting any of these other minima if you're doing steepest descent, conjugate gradient, etc. Um, another problem, or well, not really problem, just property, is that they are deterministic. So that's usually a very good property. Deterministic means every time you do it, you'll get the same result. So if I start here and I run steepest descent, this is always going to be the answer. It's maybe if I tweak around the parameters, I'll get slightly different behavior. But if I do it with the same parameters and I start at the same point, I should get the same result every time. That's called deterministic or determinism. So all these also typically only run downhill, which is basically equivalent to saying that they will only find local minima. There's nothing that they'll find if they have to climb over a hill to get there. So this is all in contrast to simulated annealing, which differs in all of those respects. So simulated annealing, if you run it multiple times, can find multiple different minima, multiple different low energy structures. It is stochastic. So even starting at the same point, you will get different results. There's an element of there's an element of randomness to it if you do it certain ways. Um, and it goes uphill and downhill. So there's always a chance that it could find your global minimum, your lowest energy minimum energy structure. All right, so what does steepest descent, uh, what, what does it consist of? So let's describe the algorithm like we've been describing the other algorithms in this chapter. So we have to choose initial x0, choose some initial structure. All right, so we choose you know somewhere on this surface to lie. In general, it, with n atoms, we're going to have three n coordinates. So this is a much more complicated surface in general, but we choose some initial value for all of our coordinates, usually some chemically informed choice based on chemical intuition. All right, then we are going to propagate the system forward. So xi goes to xi plus one. Well, I've been using n, so let's keep on using n throughout this chapter. xn goes to xn plus 1. And there are various ways you could choose to do this. You could choose molecular dynamics. You could choose Monte Carlo, Metropolis Monte Carlo, etc. But some method for going to a next energy step from a next position step from the previous one. Typically something that's some type of like trajectory or trial based thing. All right, then the next thing is we are going to decrease the temperature which that simulation occurs at. So specific, more specifically might look something like this. So Tn plus 1 equals Tn 
times 1 minus alpha, where alpha is equal to t naught, the initial temperature, divided by the number of steps or the number of iterations we're going to do on this loop. So basically, t starts out at t naught for our dynamics or our Monte Carlo for our uh, our temperature that this is going to occur at for assigning either velocities for MD or assigning uh, the Boltzmann factor for Metropolis Monte Carlo. And then it's going to start at T naught and then just linearly slow down all the way to zero. You could choose this to decay with some other kind of function. Maybe it exponentially decays. Maybe it, uh, who knows, any kind of decay you want. But the most simple way would just be to have it linearly go from the initial T to the final T, decreasing slowly at each step. Okay, and then actually it would be t naught times 1 minus alpha times, times n trial, the number of the trial. Okay, linear progression down towards d. Okay, and then we are going to repeat this loop until the temperature is equal to 0. Why are we going to stop when the temperature equals to 0? Uh, remember we discussed that the kinetic energy, the velocities of our atoms are the velocities of our atoms are proportional approximately to the square root of temperature. So when temperature is zero, um, our velocities of all of our atoms is basically going to be zero. And our Boltzmann factor is going to reject every every metropolis Monte Carlo step. So once we get to t equals zero, the system is frozen. A classical system at zero Kelvin cannot move. It does not have any kinetic energy. So once we get to zero Kelvin, we're stuck there wherever we have landed. So what is this going to do? This is going to start off at some initial state and it's going to bounce around inside the system. The temperature gets lower and the energy gets lower. It gets harder and harder to get over larger hills. So maybe we get trapped in this region here. Then the energy goes down again. Maybe we get trapped in this region here. As the energy keeps going down, we keep getting trapped until we rattle around and eventually settle at a particular local minimum. So we'll always settle at a local minimum by the time t equals zero. But each time we do this, we might get a different result. Because whenever the energy gets lowered, we might be in a different place as the energy lows, and we might go to a different minimum each time as the simulation occurs. OK, so some properties of this type of algorithm. We get better results as alpha goes to zero. So basically saying the longer we take to, to simulate before we go down is going to give us better results. So it makes sense that if you go slower, you're going to get better results that if, than if you go faster. That makes it less dependent on your choice of initial coordinates. So in the limit of, of choosing uh, infinitely slow alpha, you'll get much better results than choosing a very large and very quick alpha. And you also get better results as t0 approaches infinity. So if t0 starts very high, you can get over a lot of those humps and you can sample a lot of the space before the energy gets very low. If the t is very low to begin with, then maybe I can't even get over my initial hump and I'll just end up trapped in the same uh, local minimum every time. You know, maybe I can't get over the largest barriers that I need to get over. So in the limit that temperature goes to, inf to initial temperature is infinite and alpha is zero or very, very close to zero, then I get, a, I get basically every possible minimum I get with some probability. So we'll say for that over there, if true, then the probability of reaching a given minimum is approximately proportional to the partition function of that minimum. And that means sometimes the global minimum is most likely, sometimes. Doesn't always have to be the case, but typically the lowest energy structure will be, or the lowest energy region will be the one with the highest partition function, but that's not guaranteed to be the case. There, you, lots of situations it isn't. But 
basically simulated annealing, you're much more likely to end up with the global minimum than either of these results here. Uh, steepest descent, conjugate gradient, etc. They're all dependent upon choosing an initial set of coordinates, which are already going to take you directly downhill to your global minimum. Any choice other than this region right in here, and we're going to a different minimum. Simulated annealing, if you do it at a high enough temperature and do it slowly enough, you're fairly likely to get the global minimum, depending on how likely other minima are as well. So that's uh, simulated annealing, and it has the main benefit of that there are multiple minima you can get, and you can get m minima that you didn't necessarily anticipate by your choice of initial geometry.